And we have a lot of that lately. <laughs> Here. Have to open it first. Yeah. 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 So you all know, a mission. Initially, this fall, we had a meeting with our refinery, but uh, the estimates for what it would cost to make this building beautiful again, and millions of dollars. And it has occurred to us that we don't have to go that far in the first phase. The first phase could be dealing with the fire codes and the ADA compliance and some of the um, structural stuff in the bottom floor, ceiling and in the ceiling and the floor. The floor the um, in this plan, we've put First, the project of the hall, then the East Valley Community Group, who we are, and the project goals. Did you have any questions about any of those parts? Um, the next part was the financial plan, and we do have a capital campaign plan with two phases, uh, silent and in public, and we also have a grant committee has done a lot of work on putting together possible grants. The part of that is that almost all grants are matching grants for projects like this. So there has to be some money in place to begin with. Um, if the building was put so that it was usable, and got it so it's usable, we have a marketing plan um, with when I was working with the hall being rented many years ago before the town owned it, we didn't have anywhere near the marketing abilities that we have now with Facebook, front porch, or websites. So um, I think it would pre be pretty awesome. Future programs and services in the hall. Um, any questions about that? There. It is suggested to have an evaluation plan to see how your business is going, and we could do different surveys, and also there could be monthly or quarterly financial statements compiled by the time. We added some appendixes about what it, what is the cost. And to open the hall and follow the fire marshal um, list that needs to be addressed, the Upper level would be, and we're using a cost from the Breadloaf Architects. Um, they were very thorough. And so the upper part to do the ADA, the bathrooms, the ramp off the north side, and was around $203. That included demolitions, railings that were needed, handicap parking. <laughs> 
203,000. Did I say 203? Well, that's a heck of a deal. Well, yeah, thank you. Do it. I'm so glad you were listening. I was just. <laughs> um, and then the, also, what it means is we have to replace the ceiling, flooring, and paint downstairs, reinforcing the upstairs floor. That means on the downstairs, I have to be reinforcing the upstairs. Project management, design drawings for big purposes and contingency costs takes it all up to around 369000 Any questions about that page and those, that information? Does it sound so thorough, yeah. that particular part? I think you're, you're blending two pieces together here, right? You're doing a, this is what you want to be with the hall, and now you're telling us that like, of a construction side of it, right? What you I was told, to back. yes, I was told that in the business plan, we should uh, be putting in financial information. Mm -hmm. So this would be, in order to get going, this page is what it would cost. The next pages are probably the business end, where you would see the income and expenses. Is that what you're asking me, Karina? Yeah. It's what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. You're, you're blending construction and operating into one plan. Yes, because yes, because the plan is the construction and then to operate it, and that's the whole. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're right. Uh, where are the funds for opening the hall? Well, there's a couple of sources. One is the town of Randolph. Uh, the EBCG has put in their application for ARPA funds that could cover the costs for reopening the hall. Uh, we also have EBCG itself. A second source is we have a capital campaign committee, a grant writing committee that would help with additional funds. Um, and I put on there about the grant committee and that many of them are matching grants. Any questions about that? Maybe the next page is the current operating expenses and future income. I don't know how easy this was to understand, but right now, the expenses for the hall and the East Randolph Fire Station are together. It's the uh, Gillespie Fuels and Propane, the Blue Mountain Power, and Comcast. Those are monthly charges. I have the bills with me if you'd like to see them. Um, the hall, that total comes to 500. <clears throat> Pretend half of it's the hall, 250. Um, current monthly operating expenses for the hall only. Uh, uh, lawn mowing, plowing, miscellaneous maintenance, estimate based on private costs. I don't know what it costs the town to go down and plow and to mow the lawn. Um, the property and liability insurance is $200 a month, and that's from the monthly the cities and towns. So, what that so that comes up to about $535 a month. Um, and additionally, once you got using it, there would be some occasional septic tank pumping that would have to happen if there's large through large um, events. And we know that moving these are moving figures, and as future usage of the hall will cause increases in costs. Then we tried to put together what income would look like. And this is also based on what's going on around in uh, Central Vermont for rentals, uh, but weekend rentals all day, half day, so on and so forth. Uh, possible monthly scenarios, real, really, without a lot, without a lot of marketing uh, every month. I think that we could bring in a good 500 to 675 dollars. With added marketing, it certainly can bring in a lot more. Um, we have found 
And it touches the back page. But only two. Here, he to maintain very well in here. This is the Gillespie fuel and propane. Yeah. Uh, based on January to October 22. But we're not heating. This is the fire station and the hall. Yes, well, yes, you are because you're going, otherwise, you might to degrees. Super minimal, just the downstairs. Yeah. I think that we're under that. I think that because this was January to October, and like you say, he wasn't able to go down from January to May. Um, that certainly is. So if you look at Gillespie fuel and propane, where that $135 a month, who do you think that's for? It's not for the house. That's for the fire station. The heating the downstairs is not on. The propane. Oh, that's okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the fuel. Right now, you know, they're only okay. showing uh, one weekend rental, one all day rental, one half day. So you're basically talking about two days of rental in a month and your future income, which isn't a lot. But one question I, I believe I asked this before, but it just refreshed my memory. What is the capacity of the hall for an event? Such as a wedding or something, or let's say you were to do a theater style seating, right? In rows, you know, meeting. I mean, how many people could attend? Um, no, no, no. Don't do that. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, um, okay. Um, Depends on the event. No, I reread that and he told. He told, I think it was, he told, um, I think the next 60 to 60 to 80, something like that. No, it's more than that. It's 120. That's why I wonder what he said, because I'm only going to put this in a ten equation, but based on the square footage, there's a different number. But I, I'm not sure what they're, what they're looking at. Because it was a... A challenge with the structure. Mm -hmm. Before, yeah. I think it's about the foot limit. Ah, downstairs. But yeah. if we didn't, if we didn't, you're right. If we didn't, some of the, I mean, yeah. some of the, what they're talking about is fixing those. Right. Right. So right. Right. the money you're spending. And that then changes it, but your septic tank is in one of the So you've got to. Yeah. Okay, yeah. occupancy load from the fire marshal. Yeah, it's perfect. That's what I wanted. And to fire see. protection. Uh, this is Steve's Rooney's notes with Maurice. Uh, the total building occupant load can be posted and limited to 100. 
completely possible, as this will realistically meet the owner's goals without requiring fire, fire suppression to be provided. A common fixture counts can be set by this owner. The lower level occupant road can be considered non simultaneously. Both levels would be used by the total road above. An additional load would not be added for the lower level. Well, so they're saying 120 for the whole building. So, what was the restriction on, on the 120? Is there the There's a fire alarm system. It was that um, the septic system. Yeah. We would have to have the septic system pumped. Or you have to have four of those you would, correct? Yes. Yeah. So the 120, in my opinion, is remarkable, okay? All right, because I can share with you there's more demand for that kind of space now because those people in businesses like the team are not, we're just not interested in the size of insight. So I think you know, you're on the right track here. The question is how do we get you from point A to point B? I want to add to what you said about uh, about conversations I've had with I've never realized this, okay? But people having funerals are looking for places to have their receptions. Exactly. And the two funeral directors, the one Days and um Sillies have told me they they just don't have places to to gain people for it. Mm -hmm. And um, White River Valley Chamber of Commerce, uh, Linda Runyon told me the other day that she, or well, I don't know, but she gets calls all the time for people wanting to have meetings in this Central Vermont area. And she says it's kind of limited and it would just be nice to have another place. Um, we can put on events. Um, the group itself can put on events that would help to raise money for the monthly costs or maintenance type of things. Um, doesn't have to be just other people renting it. That's part of the group's you know, idea of supporting the community. And we did do a survey a couple of years ago indicating the need for a place for families, training, education, marketing products, and entertainment. Oh, and a percentage of the monthly income would be like the mm -hmm. if we get to that. A question that came up when you were talking with the, you had the um, presentation by Greg Lowe was about parking. And we did look into other potential land around it that might be possible. Uh, Peggy spent quite a bit of time with the um, Mr. The Jacobs, the Jacobs family, mm -hmm. and also the people that own the young couple that own the property next to the old art store across the road. Yep. Okay. And um, got nowhere with Jacobs, and the people in the that own the small piece on the other side thought they would be interested in using the property. Two days ago, I called um, Agency of Transportation and Traffic Control Department to talk to them. I said he was trying to get So he did. He's working here. He's um, <laughs> working. Yeah, he's not retired. Uh, and I asked him about it. And I said, What's the parking restrictions down there on Route 14 in this area? And he got on his computer and he looked at Old Street and everything. He says, I don't see any no parking signs there. I said, I haven't seen it And he says, as long as the cars are off on the you know, right side of the white, yeah. it's fine. So I don't think parking is an issue right now. We still have parking right now. Can you reach out to the host at it and watch Um, I know that he's going to put up something. Oh, he's getting frustrated with the permit. Oh, so he no, not. it is. <laughs> and that's another possibility <laughs> that would like be right there. Yeah. That would be it would probably be a lease then. May I ask what the Jacobs objection to having parking is? Are they um, using that? Yeah. Are they actually using that land I for think, agriculture? I think
think a couple of things. He, he, you know, has, I mean, there's a whole stretch of land behind the, behind the firehouse that goes over almost to Route 66 right. that he owns. And so he's not in, interested in taking like a portion of it and, and selling it. So, so that was one issue. The other, the other issue is that I think he's planning on putting some, some housing back in. Uh -huh. The little piece that across from the other little piece would be great for a little playground area that we still have last time. Yeah. 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 I won't be alive then, so I'll show you I mean, parking along the, the state highway is fine, but this time of year, mm. well, and I can tell you the and not so much. But you wouldn't need to wait. I don't think you're parking time for this month. They're not going to allow it. I don't think you're Who's not going to allow it. Is it gonna allow he said park? no. I know who you talk to. <laughs> <laughs> See? And I'm telling you, that's not, that's not anybody who makes that decision. That's somebody who pulled it up on a screen and said, What do we have for traffic signs down? That's true. Uh, Tom Bridge on 110 does has parking too. And until they put up no parking signs, they can park. Okay, how many cars can you park on the drop? I'm going to start with yeah, that. Yeah, let's oh, start. So, did you get off the, so we know there's not enough right away there to put a mm -hmm. sidewalk. Right. So if you've got to be off the white line, you're on everybody's lawn. Right. So what about, well, I'm just talking about what can you put on the property? I've been down there before and probably had 40 different cars. Is that true? Um, it was evaluated by uh, Fred Lowe's, and I do not recall what that said, and I do not have that report. Okay, well, I've got to experience and having no job. I've had at least like 40. Training, I think you've probably chose to care. So, so just tell everybody well, that carpool. Okay, mm -hmm. so then you can probably get to your 120 net number. Well, the other thing is what has happened in the, at one point when we had Valley Days, um, the young man that has Brian Kippen who has Greenwoods. Yes. Has a lot of people to park. Sure, there you go. Yeah. Okay, short walk down. And that was just allowed. He wasn't expecting it. No, I'm not saying. I think you've got the budget to create some collaboration. Okay. Yeah. I so guess. here's my thoughts on this. So, so all right, you need three hundred and thirty, forty thousand bucks here somehow to get you into that stage of the game. And I think your business plan and you know, I think you're kind of light on what you can generate monthly, but you also light on what your expenses might be. But I think it's probably doable in some form or fashion. I don't know what portion the town would contribute or how it would even begin to contribute to that. But you're probably getting closer to where I think that just if I ran the numbers with the mortgage calculator, you need a couple thousand bucks a month if you were not bored of money and you've got into over 30 year mortgage, you could probably afford. $2,000 a month, and you could probably generate that from revenue down there if your market is really in a good, strong place because there is a demand for that space. There's no doubt about it, and that's only going to continue because of the lack of venues and the lack of ability for people to create venues because of that permitting process that we just talked about. <laughs> okay? I, mean, I can tell you a lot of experience in that. So I think it's a, a a viable thing, okay? How we get you from point A to point B is not quite clear to me yet, but it's certainly a lot more achievable than it was when it was a couple million dollars. So, not that it's going to weigh on my shoulders much longer here, but I'm sure that you're going to get to. I think you're the. I don't think you're the only thing to sell this your full time. Day. I might actually, maybe I'll go join them and help them. Maybe. We'll see. Well, you have time to do that, but there's time no, to do No, no, that's a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you, I think it's viable. And I think, you know, $2 million, no. But, you know, now you're 330 something thousand bucks, and probably there's some grant money out there for this. And I would I would agree. With Don't that. you think? I, I think you've done a very credible job here of putting a business plan together. I mean, there are some things that need to be. There's some holes in so it. There needs to be a grass, but oh, yeah. this is an excellent. Uh, this is a, a quantum leap from where we were before. Yeah. So, um, and, and Perry, you're absolutely right. I mean, the capacity there at 120 is spot on where there's a hole in the market here. But, I mean, the only other 
facilities that I can think of right here in Randolph, especially since the hotel never happened up by the Coming. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. Well, good. It's good, coming, good. but I can tell you there's no conference center right off the bat, so you have no competition. For right, us. <laughs> right. You, you've got two. You've got Chandler with 485 seats, and you know, that's a big space. Upstairs, you've got their upstairs um, the meeting room, which capacity is 85. The only other place I know you can rent around here um, is. Uh, I know people rent the Legion Hall from time to time. I yeah. think that's probably about 50. And BTC. Well, yeah, Sometimes. BTC and the churches. But, but uh, 125, 120, whatever it is, that, that that's a really, there's a real need in the market for that kind of space. And the fact that we're geographically in the center of the state means people can come here from all over the state and it's equal distance for people from St. Albans and, and Brattleboro. So. I don't want to cut this short. We have a long agenda. Yeah. I know you do, but I do want to say I think the town has an opportunity to, to help rescue this building with Arthur Cones. And the Arthur criteria that they have, um, the four criteria, this building meets every one of those. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at all of the applications, Since the firehouse is benefiting from the new vacuum on top of this. Yes. Well, in fairness, it was the fire. Uh, yeah. So they're benefiting that the fire station has completely moved out and right. that moved into short term. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, they would like to move back into their office of it, but because it's taken up some of their equipment. That's a good thing there. Have you have you done a presentation to the ARPA committee yet? You've applied, but have you actually gone and done a presentation? They haven't asked for a presentation. I think they're not quite there yet. They put their application in and that's what they're going to do their So we're on hold until the ARPA wants to figure it out. I don't think you're on hold, dude. I keep going. hearing people saying this makes sense now. You're towards the number that makes sense. So, you know, I think you're into the finding the money to the building. I don't believe you're going to get ARPA money at the full 369. No, no, no. Don't raise the money. Yeah. You don't go fund me. You guys can make money. Don't raise the money. Go see. The ARPA money can certainly be applied towards a match. That's right. That's that's what we're thinking. Yeah. It's it's. The upper money would be applied towards the matter. Go find out what really is out there. Go see what the community wants to put together, and then maybe from there, once you know what you've got back, then you've got some matching funds to go after some grants, and, and you, can, you, know, you can make a case of a viable option. I do I, I know we need to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do know the board is going to be changing. Okay. Are you going to want us to come back and help each other do this? No. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks. Bye, ladies. Except we're just board vacancy. Oh, run away now. Oh, don't <laughs> <laughs> she, she's over. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But you got a great one uh, down in East Randolph. Going to. Oh. 
Stephanie Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. She's on. Sir, she's on. Ranch Prodery. Um, yeah. Hey. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. See you. Exit stage left. <laughs> So this we put on, I think back in coming out of the December meeting, and just to touch base to see what you wanted to do. I think there was more or less a direction at that point. The idea would be to come back around. Aries is a delayed um, departure, so you know, we're not quite vacant yet. We just will be. The oh, past was an emergency situation that we talked about. I don't think it makes sense for us to go try to find somebody to. And even month. by the time we come to our February meeting, we're yeah. really probably appointing somebody to do like a pre town meeting hearing. That'd be, that'd be their one meeting, it'd be yeah. 45 minutes, and <laughs> which we always hold and nobody shows up. So, yeah. come join us for the night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, keep us company. All right, yeah. yeah. Um, and there were already people submitting um, petitions for hmm. the, uh, the uh, unfulfilled terms. So right now there's one for each. You're up. You're up. You're up. I'm up. You're up. You're up. Larry's up. And so you and Trini are the mm -hmm. normal circle. Yep. Yeah. Right. You're going to fill Pat and myself. Yep. Two years on Pat. We have four members on this board. Two on Pat and one mm -hmm. on Good. One on Paris, yeah. Paris. So and there are already two petitions. I have four signatures on my petition. Oh. How about you? <laughs> you guys, man. You got yours? <laughs> mine's, mine's been in for a long time. Oh, you're good, oh, then. I found mine in the pile today and went, oh, yeah. man. That's it on the main one. Um, all of them? There are, there are already two petitions. I've never here. been to a select board meeting. I've lived in town for almost three years. So I want to come and see what it's all about. Okay. I was just going to move an item up on the agenda. Oh, no. Here for a specific item. So, okay. I may just step out of the right. <laughs> Well, we'll keep doing we'll keep doing the <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, right. 24 budget review and discussion. We've been trying to figure out how to get this tonight. Usually we have our race car as a laptop tonight. We've got our Plymouth Volare. So we're having a hard time with the screen share function, so I apologize. I'll count out some of the page numbers from the packet that's posted online. It's still posted under the 112, so anybody at home wanted to follow along. Um, so this is a review. It's version four is what we've been calling it. That just sort of speaks to the iteration that it is and how we kind of mark the passage of each successive draft. Um, this one is a little different than the, you saw a summary, I think, which is on page 17 of the packet. Um, let's try to break it down by category and group them all together so you could see kind of at a glance where some of the increases are, any decreases were, where the overall percentage increases were. And then what we paired it with this time is you have the full expenditure um, and revenue detail line drafts. Those begin on page 18. We've also provided, we talked last time about sort of some scenario forecasting. So we've done one of those for you that is, we've Put duplicate copies in there. I'm noticing. So Recording in choices. progress. Oh, you did it to me, of I'm all sorry. people. I totally forgot. Oh, three man. <laughs> That's page 43. Is that scenario? We just focused on the general fund and the highway fund as the two um, for which uh, made the most sense to do the exercise for. The enterprise funds are obviously user mm -hmm. rates, smaller groups, the police district, the police fund reflects what the contract is, and the library has of its separate statutory pathway through the process here. We also did um, just sort of a summary and a projected tax rate sheet for folks on page 45 of that packet. And then there is a cap draft capital plan for fiscal 24. We haven't fully completed that part of the exercise plus the out years. And the reason for that is until you kind of say where you want to land with version four or any successor, um, as you can note from that scenarios table, those capital transfers are one of the sort of bigger, I guess you could say, still uncertain pots of money. So if we made additional decreases, they'd probably be in at least discussion um, as potential sources for, for some or more. Um, but this version of fiscal 24 reflects where we project to be July 1, 
regardless of sort of those future years. It's really when you get into future year planning that it gets a little um, wonky. There are some comments we also don't know for capital planning, such as this, till we close the fiscal 22 audit process, whether or not we have any additional funds to allocate as the voters had determined last year. So it's sort of the emergency rainy day fund, I guess you'd call it, emergency balance. Um, as long as that's full, then they go to paving and gravel road reserves beyond that. So there's possible there's a couple more dollars that can find their way into both of those. Some preliminary looks suggest that that would be. I think it helps that we had four people working on a given day at different points throughout the year where we saved our money. Um, but until those audited numbers are done, we certainly won't include those in the mix. Um, but it is possible. Um, so those are the components just to kind of mark where we've been from that December conversation on some of the summaries, each of the lines has, I think, come down some from I think the general fund one that you saw at that point was closer to that seven or eight percent range or down right around 4.5 percent. If you take that ambulance increase out of it, this number sits at just below just less than three percent. Um, I think it was 2.98 is what it worked out to be. There'll be a little bit of movement within there, but not in a way that will increase it. It'll probably go down a little bit based on some budgeting numbers from the clerk's office that have come in this week. Highway fund, we're looking at a 5.2% increase. Um, much like the general funds, um, when you look at the library fund, even at a detail level, the increases are tied to, to the various personnel costs, whether it be wages, health insurance. We've had some lucky draws at different points where an employee on a two-person or a family plan leaves and you get somebody on a buyout and that's a $20,000 to $26,000 swing potentially our way in terms of saving money. Um, we're seeing folks kind of go the other way just as our employees change out, new ones come in, um, you know, need health insurance or are on different levels of plan as their families grow and change. Um, and we're holding sort of because the finance director's position is open and this in the general fund has a new planning and zoning um, administrator's type position, that's sort of a placeholder title. Um, those are both assumed to be at the family plan level so that we can take kind of the most conservative look at what they might cost. Um, health insurance, we also, we started this last year. What we do is because it's on a calendar year basis, those are all six months of the actual premium cost. And now we're 85% of the premium share for that. And the employee fixing the other 15%. And then we try to project the next six months at some either historic rate or the rate requested by the insurer so that we're capturing the likelihood of an increase on the health insurance side. Um, I don't know that I've ever had one of those to actually report that didn't involve a, a change in vendor and even that was an increase from the prior year. It was just less of one. Um, so those are those. And then retirement costs for us have gone up again. I think last year we were talking around the employer's contribution is around 19%, and now we're talking around 21%. So as you see um, in those lines, those will go up proportionately for that. Um, debt service is down a little bit overall. The ambulance increase is from their budget documents. We have a little, we have two sort of things going on with that number. One is that we've under budgeted historically. They're also calendar year basis. When we budgeted, we look backwards. And so what we try to do is to take six months of what we're forecasting for the next fiscal year, so the second half of their calendar year, and at least play that forward. So that increase is a little larger than it would have been. It still would have been about 11, 12% from the year before, and it looks like it's 70% as we correct that, um, that budgeting mechanism. Um, some of the other key increases, I mean, they're really sort of small technology. We're just trying to right size that line. We've, consistently overspent it. We put some consulting services in there. Um, and that's when you see eventually we get a few years out, you see those actuals are really wonky. That's where Cynthia from Nimrix time has been going because when she started with us, it was in how do we get up to our full running speed, do some tech support, do some training. And then with staff transition, she's become, she at one point was kind of the department on a given day up there. And so we may end up re reallocating some of those costs I would say this fiscal year the role has changed a little bit, but um, we've also been on sort of a we've replaced the server. We've done a few things, so that should let it out a little bit from there. And it's got our managed services agreement, which didn't change too, too much from the last one. We extended for a couple of years, but we'll have to go out for an RFP for that um, at some point soon. And then later, same thing with the audit. We have a little bit of extra presumed costs for that. Um, 
but the really the big changes in there, I mean, most of that increase when you look at it and get beyond sort of the retirement personnel numbers, it's that zoning administrator capacity um, and all of the costs that go with that. We're having we have six months of a full-time equivalent in here in order to get to this number. That's sort of the sacrifice you have to make between July 1 and January 1. If we ended up and we had willing, say, neighboring partners, we could figure something out that was person sharing, cost sharing, maybe we could get somebody in and off the ground sooner as our proportion of share goes. I know there's been some interest historically and even recently, so we might have some ways to add that kind of capacity and some of them later. Um, we parked it all in zoning because that's that seems to be the, the area that was identified in a prior comment. I think that was when we had in the fall where we talked about that. That's the economic development director go out and really focus on those activities. The zoning pieces are, um, when they come in, they consume. And then when they leave, and there's no real good way to ebb and flow. Usually this time of year is pretty quiet, but this year hasn't really seen a drop off in activity. Um, it'd be nice to allow that person to dig in because you see this within the later components. Our historic grandness growth over the last five years is half a percent or so. Um, and that's got a couple of strong years in it that bring that average number up. Some other years that are a lot more modest. Um, and then, you know, inside the police district, it's even smaller. Um, and then as you sort of work down, we've got special appropriations at the same number as last year. We know that a petition came in today. That was the deadline for anyone to increase their funding. So the food shelf wants to go from $2,500 to $5,000. So that request came in. Signatures all checked out. So that will find its way forward. Um, You'll probably get a request from Habitat for Humanity to be added at some point right now. It would have to be your addition because that deadline was 4.30 or 5 o'clock today. And um, we've talked about a $2,000 add to that particular line. So here's one more potential request that could change that 89120 into something about $4,500 total greater. The police district, we've held exactly where it is. The decrease in cost from year to year is a um, decrease in the property and casualty insurance costs for the building. Um, it was a beauty a year ago. It's more of a beauty now. Um, and that is reflected in the number uh, on the insurance. And so that's where you get a little cost. The, the contract cost is fixed from the last renewal. That is obviously a variable with everything going on and everything potentially happening. But that's where we are in year two, I believe, of the new three year. Yeah. Yeah. Either side can, yeah, can exit with the 30 day written notice. Um, water funds, a pretty modest increase in talking with Chris. That one, though, next year may not be because we'll see a couple of things coming together from material costs to, um, you know, we are. We've got some good news to share to on the Wells project, but we're on pace to, to begin that. We end that, and we might have some costs associated with either the debt service or um, or the operating operation piece of that that show up in 25. But for 24, it's fairly modest. That's two and a half percent. The wastewater funds up a little bit more. A lot of that is tied to the jetter um, that we approved for our purchase, and that debt service number shows that presumed lease payment. We now know that that's off by about $2,500. To do a little bit of movement there as well um, on that line. And then materials costs are the big driver um, at a restaurant. Yeah. So that's kind of a summary look. There isn't much that's changed on the revenue end. Sometimes municipalities can just glide right by that because the property tax is the vast majority of all funding. I forget what the percentage is, but I think it's more than 80% for us. Uh, there aren't too many changes. Some of the current use and other numbers. Pilot numbers come from documents we've seen. We're just going to want to go back and double check all of those before you agree to anything long term. Um, but uh, you know, some of them, the deployable mobile unit revenue grant, that reflects what the agreement actually says for a number. So that's why that one's going up. Um, and then I'm just looking through some of them. We're optimistic on a couple of areas of recreation pay. We're going to see a decrease in some of the burial work. Um, because as part of the staffing issues we had last summer, we're going to carry those practices forward. So when it comes to East Randolph and Randolph Center, we took sort of the honest to bury back on essentially the funeral homes for those. So we'll be seeing just the ones that we end up 
doing the actual labor for in terms of interring people. Um, everything else stays roughly the same on that. And the transfers end are basically how we move money from other funds into this fund to, for the most part, pay for um, administrative charges and or um, debt service payments. You can see there's a couple of truck payments that are in there. And it looks like a big increase in economic development director wages. That's really just moving the remaining portion of the salary from zoning into that. It's a 20 or 85-15 split is what it would normally be. So it's not an increase beyond sort of the normal. It's just where we move it to. I mentioned technology. There is a decrease in the outside the police district patrols for county sheriff in here. That's not reflective of any of the uncertainty about the level of service. We historically are spending between twelve and fourteen thousand dollars on that contract that we're budgeting twenty five. So when we went looking for places to kind of bring the budget down, what are we actually spending? What's the level of service? So that theoretically could help us maintain balance to come pretty close with the outside the police district components because that's about where we've landed over a multi year period. Um, I think go through. We did save some money in the dispatch switch. It's not a big amount, but that's $3,400 with the switch to Bear City. Um, it's less on an annual basis. Um, then Orange County would be, you see firefighter wages look like they're up in a couple of different categories depending on how they change the individual rates for them. So Village Fire, Randolph Center. Um, I'm talking pretty modest for folks who race out there in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, they're, and they're all, I still think, for the most part, doing this for $15 an hour, less, <laughs> which is pretty miraculous when you think about it that way. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, looking around year round staff and building grounds, just reallocations, uh, different changes in cost, seasonal staff. Again, that's how we've changed that department over time. Um, to respond to our staffing needs. You see there's $36,000 in there for a mowing contract and for East Randolph and Randolph Center. That's last year's number plus a little bit of a presumed increase. Um, but that's an area that's been identified that if we had to go looking for money. But that also means whoever is still on the board at that point, if we cut back on that contract and that grass gets longer, phones will ring more often. Mm -hmm. We're a little late to even start the season last year. We're Quite a bit about that. Yeah. If we need to um, ask the Sunday Commission to look at our rates and what they consider. I think you did before I arrived. It'd be worth looking at it again. The amount. Charlie, we did, what was it, summer before last, we did something like 34 or 36 barrels, which was twice as many as a normal year. And all we ever really charged and got remitted was the cost for actually digging or some approximation of it. So it was you know, essentially the hourly rate was times however many hours to do that. So, we were, so yeah, so we were making $75, but the charge for the whole service um, and the other end was closer to, you know, it was closer to five is what I yeah. heard. There was a bit of a gap between what we were collecting for the labor we provided, because mm -hmm. at that point we were providing all of it. Yeah. Um, 
The way things are set up so we aren't even as they are with the so I do have concerns about the channel subsidizing very well. I think it's not like that in other places. I get that. That's what I'm saying. We have a smooth that transition. Okay. Keep chugging along yeah, on that one. one. One of the switches you'll note too is that we've taken out a tax anticipation on multiple. I mean, we've had the authorization multiple times. We don't always take them out. They run through the system. At some point, we got audit advice to put. Um, Put these through the budget as revenues and expenditures. That is not a normal activity. So I'm talking to, and we have taken it out for the purpose of the budget documents anyway, because otherwise they look skewed by whatever that projected anticipation note maximum would be. So you see that you see the we kept the costs in in this year in terms of you see there's a loss of revenue on the interest side and a loss of what we pay on the interest on the other side to be a little bit of reaction made. We were scheduled to make some money through the. I don't even the vagaries of arbitrage basically last time that I didn't quite fully get other than it landed on the right side. Um, so we'll keep those in there so you can kind of see those because those would be sort of our expenses and revenues, but the tan itself washes and stuff. It's still fully shown, it's still on the books, it's full in our mm -hmm. reports, it still gets audited. It's just not necessarily a revenue and expenditure item put in the budget. So that one of the things that, that you won't see here. Um, the technology line that looks like it's up in the town clerk operating for whatever reason this one wasn't it's in our system we've been spending money out of it but it wasn't an increase so it's not really an increase it's what we've been doing um, so so we captured it um that, that really debt service is all down again the slight dip in chandler is just how the property and casualty insurance has changed we had um for the first time in a while what we had was a we saw our property and casualty numbers i mean they sort of as things get older and kind of what you add on they kind of leveled out or went down and probably in the aggregate it also reflects sort of pool wide stuff the workers comp numbers across the board for us though were up we saw our own sort of individual sets of changes and experience modification heading north of the one line but pool wide and that makes sense when you hear about everything coming sort of out of the pandemic, aging workforces. I mean, all of these trends that we've been warned about have kind of come together. So not terribly large increases, just that they went the other way. Um, I think we're also really diligent about reporting those, um, just in case, because it's better to pay a little bit on the front end and get that sort of protection for the employer and the employee and, and having the case file started and, and kicking the process off. So before you go to the next one, I just wanted to note that my, my comment about having the, the, the cemetery numbers not being broken out for a long time. I don't mean that to reflect poorly on anyone. Oh. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want you to take up the wrong no. I know you have other things to do than that hasn't risen to the top of your to do list. <laughs> you know, it's probably not. I just want to make sure I, that wasn't. The, I got to get the cost oh. for separating the fire oh, station out first. So. Oh, if Betsy doesn't give me her I teacher mean, look I again. Sure I'm not <laughs> placing blame. I, I don't want anyone for that not happening. Yeah, I, well, I, I get it. I'm well, good. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm, I'm good. There's an increasing trend. In, in Maybe you get to that, like, you know, four or five years down. Not the winding up any cemetery. Right? Yeah. 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 So we can we'll get, get there. I know. I know. Well, I would say that given, given the situation, Looking at what happens inside and outside of this here, I think the problem is, you know, those are acceptable numbers, and 
It seems to make people really strange. She's heard about this because realistically, a lot of other things are going up. So if we can manage to keep it within those realms going forward, I think we've done a great job. Okay. Well, no, just in terms of looking through, just to point out a couple others, when you get into highway, um, you see some of the increases that are on, again, the personnel side of things with some of the costs, whether we've, um, it's a combination of what we've negotiated for, for increases, we've hired a few employees at rates a little bit higher than predecessors, in some cases a little bit lower, um, and, um, and we're projecting maybe a little extra in there as well, we tried to um, keep over time sort of at its historic. So some of those increases are offset just as we try to dial in those budget numbers. That's always a bit of a guess anyway. Um, you see the workers' comp numbers up. But really when you get into the operating pieces, those are material costs and it's everything you'd expect um, based on where the needs are and what we're doing. Now. We know gas, well, we're pretty sure gas is going to be more expensive. At minimum, we don't know what it's going to do. Mm -hmm. There's cuts somewhere between those two variables. Salt is trending more expensive, so there's a small increase in there for salt. Um, pavement patching and culverts are two things we are doing more of from our own maintenance practices and the culverts tie into stormwater requirements and, um, and the cost of those have gone up. We've also put a small increase in there for radios. Um, they're $1,500 a piece, so budgeting $500 or $1,200 a piece when we're even buying a radio um, at that cost. We, um, one area that we're we got heating oils that are up, trying to figure out what we did with the sign, not if we did anything at all. Um, signs are more expensive. We should do a full inventory at some point with all our free time. Um, but we're also battling a secondary scourge of um, a bunch of them have disappeared after we replaced them and or are disappearing right now. So we're working some channels to... Yeah. Well, we're trying to encourage folks that have maybe, and this is for anybody watching, we but we don't think anybody who does is probably yanking streets on. But if you are, all we want them, yeah, we all we want, want them back. Is back. Yeah. Your question's asked. From to quote from one of my favorite movies, The Big Lebowski, all the dude ever wanted was a drug back. <laughs> Please bring our signs back when I come back up. He held the room to the Yeah. It's <laughs> true. Because they, they are, as they, MUTCB -E compliance, yeah. they get. And you notice that they get bigger, they get wider. It's, these are and more expensive. Ways. They are not cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. But do, really, what what is the deal? That's why I don't like. Well, you yeah. could see if the street had like a funny name. Yeah, like Simpson gets stolen all the time. Mm -hmm. That makes but, sense. But why is Weed. We had a weed road in Hinesburg. That one was very popular. Sure was. <laughs> I'm not even sure they drove away before that one disappeared. Probably not quite as popular anymore. What a road is down now. We've got um, in here to, the, again, the reserve transfers are all the same. Um, We've done, I think, with particularly with the highway equipment, we've sort of out of cycle replaced some trucks, some equipment. So um, if there's a year to kind of take a knee a little bit with the equipment transfers, this makes some sense. There's a hydro seeder that you see in the capital plan that ties into um, some of the storm water and other sort of water quality components. It's a nice thing to have. We borrowed it from neighbors, but it helps us get out there and get after we might even be able to figure out different ways to share it and to do those things too so it may not be a solely us kind of expense but um we'll, we'll have to sort of figure out truck schedules going out but that's in the area we, we, we're doing i think okay the pavement transfer that's in here is the one where depending on where we want to land with a full five-year plan um, using this number and building out from here and trying to pick the roads that um, we still have to do the full PCI index, but when we sort of look at how to group them geographically, how to group them based on estimated costs, there is a roughed out sort of five year. We try to balance them geographically. These transfers don't have enough, especially if costs increase, at least as expected. They go up more than that, obviously. The whole point of that exercise is we're reevaluating every year anyway, but at the same time, we're going to put them on some kind of pattern. The capital plan that's up in here now. Goes back to East Bethel, was on the list last year. We traded a few things out 
to have Main Street included in there instead. So we'll go back out to East Bethel. It's a candidate for class two paving grants. So it's a nice sort of other way to stretch out paving dollars. Those are $175,000. We need to match them. So we'll be able to do hopefully everything from the beginning to Central Scientific. There's a pavement scene that's really noticeable. Um, and that would be to there. And then South Randolph Road, so that those projects are kind of co-located. We know we've got more paving than that, but between the roller, the human resources, the pothole patching money, I think we can do a little bit better, go a little bit farther with some of those patching routines. And then when you look out in the years, we bring some of them in here in the village. So we're trying to work through those, keep doing the project every year. Some of the projects in the capital the plan just got rolled over from last year. It was staff capacity as much as anything. Um, Given the facilities, I need somebody to plan it, take it from sort of idea to bid to recommendation and through the process. So hopefully we can knock a few of those off. Okay, I think it waits until I'm in the middle of a thought that I don't want to lose and then it turns on. It's uncanny. Um, but yeah, and then it's shown in the capital plan, but one of the big projects is the Wells project. I think we will be able to stay on schedule and do that this spring. I heard today that we got our federal EMR was signed into law the other day. So mm -hmm. it won't arrive instantly. We can borrow against it effectively. Yeah. So that takes us, yeah, that's the 775 is what we got for mm -hmm. that. So when we pool it with the other available resources, we get up around to that 3.1 marker that we needed to be at with construction bids. There's probably additional subsidy coming from DEC to give us a little more um, in the mix. We just got to make sure all the funding sources work well together because this is the ultimate patchwork growth at this point. Mm -hmm. A million and a half bucks that we're borrowing. We got a $300,000 loan from the community development program. We got $450,000 from Northern Borders. We got a $775,000 earmark. We might have additional subsidies through DEC are we okay with match ratios? How much we need to match of our own resources to, you know, it's just making sure it all talks. Yeah, it all but it's nice to know that we're, that was kind of the last hurdle, so we can maybe start to really queue up for that. So. so that'll be a big project to manage. I, we're going to want to hire somebody to be working with, for sure. Yeah, we may have to. It'll depend on how debt service falls, when it falls, um, sort of what the ultimate kind of outlay is. If there's any kind of offset, um, you know, we're essentially swapping up the operation of Pearl Street Well for this newer model up at the Ellis lot. There may not be any savings in it, but figuring out what the impact is to the system. I, I, I'd be shocked if we don't have to look at words. So just. Especially since we haven't touched rates. And it's time to pay back debt. Yeah. <coughs> I'm not saying I'm not. You're ready to think you have interest rates, but people just don't really know. No, I know. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. All I'm saying is we haven't. Changed them in a long time. Yeah, that's true. Maybe not. I'm not going to be here. Well, if it's an apple, it's somewhere that we need to talk about. Well, no, but you would see it from your form. It's all yeah. on it. There's people calling them. What are you guys going to do? And I talked to Chris about it. Even when you flush it, and then it takes very long to get back to flush it somewhere else. Yeah. The problem is, it's, it's so much of it. I mean, even though Home Street was all done over, you know, as soon as you flush it up there, everybody up there has got an issue because there's just so much stuff that happens. So, just because you put a new well project together, you don't think you're building a reservoir that's going to be off the hook for those stuff. Because I'm telling you, I can't help you see it through. You're still going to get people really, really mm -hmm. excited about water quality. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but Jane said, it's front porch water, I'm almost. Should be cool. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just wait and see. see. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Some of these lines that are pretty much flat. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to 
question when Kristen explains to you the problem is that you have a lot of holes drawn on the point dead end yes. guns. Yeah. And the water just settles there until they need something that moves a little bit and moves a little bit. Mm -hmm. and they never get that good. good. Yep, exactly. And then they decide to go out and wash their car out of yeah. the weeds. And you get a large volume of those through and get it um, that's the water probably last year in Elm Street was right after I made all that snow. <laughs> yeah, we'll right off. Yeah. I think it will help us start to, I mean, we're really narrowing the, the field. The wells should be that big improvement. That's kind of one of the, the big ideas behind it. But we may still need to get into some of these lines. We might be looking at what he's replaced, but he got the loop maybe and yeah. instead of creating a dead end. You gotta get the dead spots. So I think we need to have some work to really get all the way there, but. Um, and then just to kind of keep going through all this, the, the price tag for all this at the end of the day that we're sort of estimating right now, obviously with a reappraisal underway, this is all this is all based off business as usual, but that number see what happens when we get there in terms of the numbers are going, but anywhere from 2.8 cents to 3.8 cents per 100 of assessed value, whether you're outside the district or inside the police district. So for inside, that's anywhere from say 70 to $139 a year, or six to $12 a month. Outside the police district, 43 to 85, and anywhere from, say three and a half to seven dollars a month there for these pieces. Obviously the ground list grows a little more than you expect. The number changes one way if it goes less than what you expect. Compared to the other way, you get more non-tax revenue. And, you know, a couple of different variables, but by and large, when there's been this sort of exercise, we think we've come in pretty close. And, but we did also put in there, you had asked last time we talked about different scenarios when we had a conversation about budget goals. There's a level fund scenario in there for, like I said earlier, for highway in general. Just focused on that one because once we did some of the additional work, we were down already at the 5% number that was target number one from that conversation. You take the ambulance out of the general fund, you're at three. So I was just sort of trying to highlight what it would take to get from here down to a more or less a zero. I think I left one of them $1,700 short of that, but okay, gratuitous at that point. <laughs> So a little bit more. Um, but it gets into the reserve transfer pretty quick, is what I think it sort of showed. And so there's a little bit of trading today for, for tomorrow, potentially. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, capital plan, a lot of this is rolled over. Um, it's a lot of just transfers to reserve. Um, we'll keep doing paving. We've got that Wells project underway. Those alone will be big ones. We've got some gravel road. Uh, overtopping projects that we've been trying to do each year. That's part of that gravel road reserve. So we're still doing quite a few projects. We'll probably do another grants and aid project like the one we did on Howard Hill. Um, that's everything from ditching to culverts to roadbeds to, to tree maintenance. Um, we are looking and costing up upgrades to our various security systems to make sure they all talk, that they're easily accessible. Um, one of the things that's been highlighted a couple of times, but when we had the unauthorized hydrant openings, is how there are gaps in that system. And the things either don't talk or they hadn't been updated mm -hmm. or they're harder to access. So we want to do all that. Uh, that means us some access control, other measures that might come out of different capital reserves um, from changing the door key pads. They're integrated on this building. They're worse on a few others. Um, we don't have a full accounting. I mean, keys are out there and it's gone. And then with our fuel systems in particular, we'd like to change something a little more modern that will help us facilitate the building of the schools, keep those a little bit sort of access control over it. We'll know who's got fuel and when and, and for what purpose. Um, not that we think we have a large problem with it, but it nice to have those out of measures. And then it might enable us to do some other things um, for security issues. You know, and it's a problem when you're trying to we also, especially with this, it's the center garage in particular, because there's no gate necessarily, and so you can get to whether it be the fuel or the materials. Yeah. Um, 
So it's a, it's a, um, I think it's solid. I think we can build off um, what we've been doing. This is a little bit of a chance to maybe try to, we got a lot going on this summer between those handful of projects. So this lets us maybe get our feet under us a little bit too. Hire out some of those final positions really in finance, get them onboarded, and also start to take our forecasting exercises out and farther too. One of the projects I really wanted to deliver for this year was a complete paving plan. We got a road plan and then nice. we hit December with a really nice five week gap. That's my goal for next year. Yeah. So I think we'll have components of it um, for the paving pieces, for example. It's just making the math fit the forecast. I'm mm -hmm. trying to keep the metrics pretty simple. Um, mm -hmm. We're talking about, when you think about paving quality overall, probably talking about two separate kind of runs at it, if that makes any sense. One to improve and then to jump maybe into the, the different maintenance mode. Yeah. And so we're trying to, yeah, and they're trying to get every road touched. I'm trying to remember what it was and looking through and, and talking with folks on this place. And try to be in that 12 to 15 year range where everything's getting touched in some form. It's not probably as frequent as we you know, want to do this thing doing cracks in the It's going to take us a long time to get to that one. Yeah. So if we can get to that sort of first barrier, let's get everything up for that mark, start that clock, mm -hmm. and then build from there. We've moved the quality up, we've moved the consistency up. I think some of the paving we did this year, we'll be revisiting in the spring. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you more about that later. Mm -hmm. um, when I look at the exodus rate, I mean, I think it's great that we now kind of caught up with actors instead of looking at two different customers and continue to carry it forward. One of the, you know, we see some large percentage changes, which makes sense, right? We've got a contract out of some of our actors on the capacity to help free up the economic development out of it. We just went through and uh, looking at things based and I'm just a little concerned that we're showing the same percentages and that we're very, trying to be very aware of what we're paying and we've got a huge jump in the last compared to everybody else. And we're trying to do a fair process. What about the actual wages? Are the people actually getting paid more in the library than they say? That's the problem. What does this mean? Like, when we look at the overall cost, mm -hmm. the admin costs of it, you know, those are crazy in the class of 7%. And we're sitting here at 12%. And I just want to make sure we're, we're, we have no say in it, right? The trustees decide those wages, but at the same time, we're trying to bring everybody in the town up. Back in, if I'm not mistaken, I think they had two hires at the children's library and the adult. At least I remember seeing ads for them sometime. So I wonder if there was a salary adjustment related to finding mm -hmm. a qualified new buyer. And I'm not sure what it is, but we're the ones that are going to have to present this. Yeah. Right? yeah. So yeah. what is that? Why do we have a 12% overall? Amy's on. Amy's, Amy's on. on. There was. What? Amy's on. You also got back in. No. Amy is on. November, December from the library board. That was when they adjusted weights for in this fiscal year to 
and it lays down some of the where they started from to where they're going. Um, and then this would then build off where they went this fiscal year based on, and I forget what the, I forget what the numbers are. I'm trying to find them really quickly in my inbox that I don't have them with me. So that's what it is. So what you're seeing in terms of the gap from 23 to 24 is basically the budget to the proposed, but there's an interim step that has occurred in the in-between where those wages were adjusted from what they were. And I'll see, I'll keep looking for, I just don't have it right in front of me. But. We've got Amy yeah. here. Hi there. So I'm, I'm having a wicked hard time hearing most of the select board members. Um, so if you have a particular question, can you ask me again? So Amy, what we're trying to look at, we're looking at the different components of the budget. And one of the things we got to be able to do is explain it to folks. And the, the percentage increase in wages in the library is much higher than we're seeing percentage increases in other parts of the town budget. Hmm. Okay, so well, what I understand is, did you hire more staff? Did you do major increase? Like, what, the, what does that equate to? Sure. So, there are two components to why you're seeing an increase in wages. Um, one of them is that we did hire a new part time staff member. She's half time. Um, she's going to be doing asset based community development with youth. Actually, she's already started. So that's part way through our current year. Um, the other thing is that as wages have risen in other departments, especially with new hires in the town, um, the library's wages have stagnated and become very compressed. So that if I'm at the top of the wage scale, it makes it really hard to be able to hire people uh, at a wage that is, they're they're going to be willing to accept. So the library trustees, after a year of study, um, looking both at the wages across the town's pay scale, um, and also considering things like cost of living adjustments for the past couple of years, did do a mid-year increase for all of our current staff. Um, so there's that plus the five year projected raise starting in July. Does that address your question? Yeah, I mean, I think so. Here's what I see as part of the challenge for us. I mean, we're going around outside of the budget. On that side, we've got the state. Uh, and process we have we have almost three different pay processes. So we've got union contracts, has our hands for the way that the member of that, and we have the library that does their own wages, and we have what we do for the other I don't know how to fix the but, connection. So, well, the, I'm just talking about when we look at how we pay town employees, that's where my struggle is. And we have multiple ways that we do it, and they don't. Right. You know, it's like. But that might just be the reality. I mean, I'm not sure there's anything we can do about it uh, without penalizing one sector or the other unfairly. So, and, and the union contract, we can't do right. anything. We negotiate that one. We negotiate that. The but, uh, and then you, you know, and Amy Bray, yeah. when you go to look at hiring new employees now, they want a lot more money to yeah. come to, yeah. to work for you. And, and then that throws your whole gamut off. And we see it right now, that's a big problem in state government too, right? We're capped and that pay chart hasn't been updated in, in Amy's I'm talking about the same thing. We have updated pay charts for years. The state has it. I think it's been the 90s, the last time they yeah. updated that pay yeah. chart, other than just a little 1% here and a 2% there type thing. And when we go to hire somebody, they don't want to come to work for us. They're like, ah. And then they look at what it costs to live in Vermont, and they really are like, I'm not going to come in there. Yeah. So I, I just think it's a problem in some instances because you 
you have employees being hired elsewhere in town government and the library is watching it. Well, they just got hired for this. And so their trustees raised, and now our people over here are saying, well, the library took out big raises and we didn't get any. You know, you got this, it's such a, and you're right, maybe there's nothing we can do about it. It just, it's a challenge out there when you look at overall, how are you compensating your employees and what does that look like? And well, yeah. That's what I mean, every, every town I can think of is facing the same dilemma at every level, whether it's in the highway department or the water department or hiring a new finance director or the library. I mean, hi, Cliff. Hi, Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you have a beard before? No. no it looks good. good on him. <laughs> well, uh -huh. it's just well I, I think, think yeah, sure. I mean, I think Amy's explanation makes a lot of sense. And ultimately, it'll be the voters, right? Just a separate budget. Trying to help Amy, but I think it's ours. Don't the library budget get voted on separately than the rest of the budget? It's part of the general budget. It's part of the general budget. I try it. all one budget. And the highway budget gets no, the, the library budget is voted on separately. Mm -hmm. We do the components as articles. Oh, the when components. We set, okay. When we set the tax rate, they all get rolled. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're all rolled together in the tax rate. Yeah. You're right. Well, Amy, they never get you, voted down, so. so is the, no, it's just more of a, like, and it's not the number, it's not any of that, but I'm it's thinking of it's that whole warrant. Employee oh, retaining. Yeah. Like, how do you retain employees and how do you attract new employees and, and whatnot? And, you know, we, we've got employees that are not members of the union in some of our departments who are like, well, why am I being tied to that? Or why am I, you know, which, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. You're all part of that, that piece. But then we got our managers and we got, it's just, <laughs> Yeah. Spending a lot of time right now on looking at employee retainage and how we attract people and whatnot at the state level. And then when I look at this budget, I'm like, you know, this is a challenge and how we how we fund our employees. Mm -hmm. You know, we just looked at all our managers and said, oh, our managers aren't quite on par and whatnot, and we're in the cost of losing one and whatnot. It just brings to light that we don't have a consistent way of handling people across or how we do wages or how we do I don't know what the answer is I'm just saying I, I think it's a challenge that we have out there yeah, yeah. I think one of the projects we want to do you need to do for a while is a full paying classification type of study to at least here's our starting baseline and there was one idea that we would try to do one in-house or at least a modified version of one with the other option is sort of higher than now and you at least get the data it creates the second problem of what do you do? What do you do? Um, You've got to make the order investments. right out of here. Welcome to the weeds. <laughs> 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 you know, you're there a good time. Yeah. Budgeting puts everything. And maybe there's some, you know, bigger towns or something that have a small seal or something. It just it's a challenge, you know. We we just sit down, we like, that looks good, right? There is no Plan. There is no process. There is no, and an employee has no way of expecting, you know, in January, I'm going to get this increase or in, you know, once I've been there five years, I yeah. earn whatever, you know, it's, it's just when Trevor knocks on their door and says, hey, guess what? <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you want something different? Santa Claus is coming oh, yeah. and, you know, I, I think it's important. I think it's important to the employees. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's part of that whole what can you expect when you come to work here? Sure. I can be the same play for three years and then all of a sudden the town's gonna give me a bump and you know, and I don't know what's coming and I don't know what's there, you know. Doesn't seem like a good way to do it. We um we do have some of the data pulled out to begin this sort of exercise in looking at ourselves. So it is something we could build out on. It just kind of comes down to timing. Well, the, like the league does a nothing. survey, so we can we pulled from that, try to figure out who's similar enough, um, you know, size wise, organization size, who's got geographic factors. You know. How recent was this? It's an Every annual year. event. Oh, it's an annual yeah. event. The challenge is it's self reported, and sometimes you have to, mm. it does require some follow up to figure out mm. do you really pay this person 120 uh, bucks an hour or is it a spreadsheet? <laughs> yeah. Well, and sometimes it's. Uh, the person who's been there for 10, 15 years that has that 
historic value and whatnot yeah. has more value to you than the, you know, maybe the spreadsheet's a new person that just came on kind of thing, you know, like, but, but um, just something that I've been thinking about. Okay. okay. Next some, some questions. Um, this sheet where it's, we've got the mm -hmm. sort of the, the sort of big picture of like where where the impacts are really happening. This, this isn't if you went no, to that this level. This is if we level funded. So, that doesn't, do so, that. so you're saying yeah. so this so this is not happening. No, no, that's if so you were, went from version four to zero basically. If we took the budget and we level funded this year's levels with next year's pressures. Okay. It would complicate a number of things, I think, on the highway end. It would be. That's yeah, right. No, no, I'm not, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not suggesting that we do no, that. No, I don't, I don't actually think that would be a good thing to do. It gives us some talking points of why we're not level funded. Yeah. I don't think we're level funded. I didn't hear anybody speak in favor of it anyway. No, I don't, no, it. I don't think we should be doing that. In fact, there's lots of line items right all throughout the budget, which are, you know, the same for 23 and 24. Um, we have a number where utilization looks a little, I won't say wonky. As we've gone through transitions, as we've gone through sort of the vacancies, we've got some numbers that, you know, we'll be able to pin in over time as we get a little bit better usage data, where maybe they sort of staff it makes sense from year to year to kind of carry them over with their supply space line you know i'm talking generally sort of smaller lines um, and others that might be up a little bit as we use it to cover whether the contract services or technology or those types of things so so those that stay consistent year to year there might be an, a change in and just our utilization has been so low we have some room to so you're saying that, even that you expect a lot of these ones which are showing zero change from the the last year's budget to next year's. You're saying that you you that there's lots of them that you think the the that the current the current budget will come in under that's under those numbers. Yeah. And that even if we keep them the same for next year, that we'll be okay because we've got headroom still. That that's the hope. And some of it's also based on what we've had to do or been able to do in different years so if you go i just pulled mine open randomly to wreck and so you see the pool area a couple of years ago was up that was tied to when some jetters on the side and on one side was replaced and those have all worked well so the, when they went and failed just before fire up on the other side we went through a process to try to get them fixed get them repaired so we should be with that in terms of where those stressors are provided if nothing else Kind of breaks on that. We should be able to go back to that normal number, which is based on sort of chemical or general operating costs and not have to put in that kind of repair and maintenance money that went into replacing both the equipment, you know, getting into the concrete, resetting it, those pieces. So some of these things, it's, it should be that others, other lines, um, you know, especially when you look at office supplies, um, those six things, legal expenses that probably shouldn't stay out of the knock on wood of utilization has been low. Um, so we're able to keep those level, those types of things, where we're not maybe fully utilizing even every line of that. Some training and development lines are staying, but some are going out just based on, as you know, the people come in or somebody's got a um, thing we're, we're about to embark on um, in a professional journey. So some of those, you know, we get into that. Um, you'll see, like, when you look at the clerk treasurer's budget, when we sort of update it based on you know, Henry with some of the COVID stuff, we still have to get his numbers in there. Overall, will come down a little bit, a couple thousand bucks from what's in here. But you see that election expenses will go down a little bit. We might boost another line because it's not the same kind of triple whammy kind of a year that it is when you have a federal and statewide election baked in to the fall. But then you'll see the year after, all 24 is in there and you have presidential, so it's useful to mm. kind of come back up. Um, so some of it's how we're kind of with those smaller lines looking at where are we this year versus last year versus two years versus are we even fully utilizing this line we're trying to dial in um, 
and each year we'll, yeah, we'll do that. There was some good work done before, you know, doing that. We carried it forward, we keep going with it, and keep twisting. Um, try to get better. And some of the things we best guess is anyway, and we'll manage to the budget the best we can. But we may make trades, you might see the actuals are twice as much in one line, and we just didn't do something else in another. You know, it doesn't show up here, but you know, village fire will be in that spot where one line will probably be over. I have to do some repair maintenance work on one of the trucks, but they got other lines that they used to potentially absorb that. to try to figure out how to navigate within within the capacity as well. It would be nice to actually go through the next year though and operate without any vacancy saving capacity. How to come up for that challenge? <laughs> sure is. Yeah. That's a challenge I want. So are you at a spot where you want us to Kind of put in those new clerk treasurer numbers, the petition numbers, dial up the next version for you to consider for public hearing type of thing. Last year we did a little budget workshop meeting on a Saturday morning. I don't know if we need that. We want that. I just want to do a hearing and then we need to do something. Yeah. Essentially yeah. adopt it. I mean, so I'm good with this. We're just adding and fixing the clerk numbers and yeah. if we have um We've got one petition that yeah. needs to be updated now. Um, but I, I don't know that we need another special meeting of the select board to go over this. I see right? that. Just the, just the, just the, just the, 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 just hearing, the public hearing. The regular yeah. budget hearing that nobody yeah. should right? Yeah, I remember, I remember that was, was. I think it's great that we should, and we should do it by Zoom. Yeah. 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 Matt, it's on your forward. car this time. Not in my car. That was fun. It's on your car. phone. Four, four below zero. That was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have been in the building. Within yeah, 10 right? days before town meeting. Right? Well, we'll do one then, but last year we did one before you even wanted it. Um, uh, so if you want to do it that way, it's just figuring out what the right uh, and, and, combination is. I don't know that we need to do it too. I noticed that Michael Penrod was here earlier, and I don't know if he was here to discuss that. Yeah. He was here to listen in because they met with this version Tuesday night. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And they were they didn't offer a formal blessing. They all nodded in the sent at different yeah. points and yeah. we're, we're generally on the same page as everybody else. I think he probably inferred that we were probably going to be okay. Yeah. Well, he just nodded and went out the door. Yeah. So. yeah. I, mean, it, it, I mean, it would have been nice to have like official word from the budget committee about what they, about what they think. Like that's kind of like, why we have that? So <laughs> like provide it. feedback slash advice to the select board. Yeah. Otherwise, I think, I think, I think, I think they're good. It Jerry just sounds like you've already got it. I think Jerry would have been here if he didn't. He's in Costa Rica. <laughs> right, I know, but he would have zoomed in, probably. Yeah. Um, or somebody would have come, you know. We did talk about it, but then when he was on the call, then it looked awful nice. Yeah. It's warm and sunny. <laughs> yeah, I can. Maybe you might be busy. Back and forth. That's a nice and vibrant. Yeah. He, he looks very comfortable. I've, I've been on that porch. He's from. Yeah. Yeah. It's very nice. If someone kept walking by him, I was clearly getting getting ready to to go somewhere with water too. If they were dressed for that. It's <laughs> a shame. Sorry. All right, so, so um, are we down to not needing in the special select board meeting to schedule the public hearing, but get the next draft in case anybody yeah. sees anything wild and crazy? Yeah. Sounds good to me. Right. Thank you. Deal. Good work. Okay. All right, uh, draft town meeting warning. We're going to pull one up on the Computer for you, but with some of the stuff we're having, we usually yeah. use the manager's office laptops. So we're using an older one, it's less cooperative. We do have a draft warning going, it's been sort of shared internally. Really, the only thing petition deadline came and went today. There's nothing to be added that's beyond kind of a normal one. That if you look from last year, we'll mm -hmm. update these budget numbers, I think, are already in that draft. Um, so, we just have to make sure that they're updated and that they all talk together. Um, 
We're working to get all of the terms correct for everybody who's up for election or re-election. But otherwise, we're thinking the draft forming is going to look a lot like last year's. Um, depending on what you do, if you get a request from the Habitat, we still have that request in unless it came in after the last time I checked. So, so how, how would we handle that? Because this, this needs to be approved before our next meeting, doesn't it? This we have, theoretically, we have until February 5th to do a warning. Um, it would help to do it sort of sooner than that, just in terms of how it fits in with town report and other stuff. Sorry. We're still trying to figure out how to make those deadlines. This scheduled meeting would be after the yeah. 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 This town meeting's out. a little bit late, so. Can you send it out? With yeah, just send it out and we we'll just give you a thing and you can. We have to publicly warn that we're doing. No, I time. think we can vote it. I mean, we're basically approving the budget draft tonight, right? right? So with a the, few adjustments having to be made. Uh, I, I so have one question. I can't, it's, it's a minor point, but I can't remember what we decided at the, and that's who the annual report's dedicated to. That's something to also make sure. Oh, that I, I hadn't yeah. realized that we had to resolve that. I you know we kicked around. So we had one time. last year. Let the report get out before we get that in it. Do we just send the send it in on the January 27th? I can just use that. I think so. Do you? Right. I don't know if we're going to put it out there, but it's going to be better. Right. So never. I didn't even realize it never got in the. They were too efficient. Got it off the screen. Let's do that. That sounds fine. Sounds good to me. Yeah. No. I think that makes. We got rolling at one point. It was that was not. Does a anybody know the family really well? That's right. Because we need a photo and a I, I, I am. Does the reporter want to search that one out? <laughs> You've been checking with your colleagues at the Herald, and maybe they've got a stock file photo. Yeah, I could, I could just, I can give the Herald a call and see. It's got to be. I've been in their house, but only be. because Clayton was. Yeah, but there's got to be pictures of a bunch of old records flag or something. Or I went over and somebody's got a stock photo. Since I collect vinyl, I went over to check out his record collection, but it was in such horrible shape. Mm. Uh, he's a sweetheart. Yeah, yeah, what I don't know what he does. I don't know what he does. I'll, I'll reach out to the Herald and, and see if. Do you want to do the write up on him too? Or, or do you want to? You're the man. I'm there. You're the man. Your the staff the writer of the uh, select board. <laughs> you can um, that maybe. Yeah, I'll I'll give him a ring um, and uh, you know an interview. I mean, obviously we, we chose it. We never wrote, we never wrote something up. I think before we got it done, the report had to come with a printer. Can you remind? Somehow. There was a reason why we cited him, and it's because he it was everything he does. But he does all the medical equipment. Right, and all donates that walkers the, and things like oh, yeah. that. Right, he doesn't do it anymore. The, Nobody did it for years and years. He did it for a while. For long. years. I mean, yeah. BFW. Although he does, every now and then, you'll see him, somebody will say something on the front page. He still hasn't been able to rid of all of his stuff. Like, oh, he doesn't accept, accept it. He doesn't accept walk it. right over no, and ask you stuff. He lives on School Street. He lives on this end of School Street. So that service that he did was just amazing. He his house with a good yeah. It would be very interesting to know how many people he helped. Oh my God. Oh, that, they didn't keep track of it, but no, no, I just it's just sort of anecdotal. I mean, you know, I don't even know how many. No, but it's just the fact that he did. It's just that he, he was the go to for, hey, I need a pair of crutches or any wheelchair or whatever. Yeah, he just, he yeah. all kinds had of the connection. Didn't you just have something in the last couple of days about looking? For, no, somebody had something on the serve about, on the front porch room about looking for um, a pair of. Questions. Just ask if you push it out yeah. and tell her, we tell her why. Too many I, don't I probably should have gone. She texted, what's on it? Oh, 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 I have to, I'm supposed Actually, to send the day in, before the day before. I, I would have been perfect. I'm supposed to send in a draft on Friday. Right. A week from tomorrow. 
<laughs> but they're just, they still got to print set it and all that, right? Yeah, they didn't even I think place one, sometimes we've had another week after it's gone to them, they so start it and then we just thing. send them. It's not just, just tell me everybody's going to do this. I think they've done this for me. Yeah. More to come. All right. So just. We're, we're going to see. But yeah, sooner is better than later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Out a week. Uh, if I got to you by Monday, would that be soon enough? Yeah. Yes, Tom. I, I think I most of what's left on my plate to write is internal too, in terms of what's we need to switch to school stuff. School stuff, school stuff but should I tell it? Because of the sound. Um, the environment. Or the online. Uh, well, what should yeah. I give him? Just to sort of explain it on school stuff. Okay. All right. So you're going to send out a draft warning for everybody to. And that's how the portal will. Yeah, and then we might want to just do a little special since we now have the full remote capability again. I think I'm presuming the governor's going to sign it because it sounds like it made its way through. Just to do like a special, even like a noontime, you formally bless it. And then just, or that I'm just make sure that we don't run into any weird process flaws. Mm -hmm. Pam, you're something I can even also. So that could even be like a Wednesday. What Thursday, format do you send it to PM, you? Put it in uh, yes, I will. It, it has to go on the page. I can even lay out the page for it. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that'd be great. And I'll just so. drop a photo in and write a copy and I'll send it to you as an e <laughs> Whatever the dimensions are. Yeah, and I'll just put the whole page. Make sure it's time. What? Make sure it's time. Times or Times New Roman. Roman. Times Roman. Times Times Roman. Roman. Times New Roman. We have a, partic we have a particular that. person. I was just going to ask you have a consistent font. Yes, always. Just good, so you know. Good for you. How about a size? 12 uh, well, actually, I think, it, space. I think it ended up being 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12 on 14. This is yep. so I, I, I know what I'm so talking about. There you go. Yeah, I asked for 12 points, but I think we changed So I'll get you a PDF on Monday with a photo and a PowerPoint. Where does that publication go? On the front Usually it goes on the inside? Oh, okay. That makes sense why it's blank. That was my first town. Yep. Yeah. And we could probably jump on that earlier. I next can, year. Yeah, that's easy. And you're going to. Are you, we'll you asked? Call a rabbit out of our head next year. We're going to come up with something. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because there's a new chair. Now. I don't know if I got one. I, can't, yeah. I don't think I did. All right. All right. So we need to ratify the right. dispatch right. services contract with Barry City. We so moved. Here. Second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Wait, who? Oh. Okay. Motion carries. Approve the 2022 certificate of highway mileage. Well, have you no signed? Changes, no changes. Let you sign the change, and we'll get that back. Mm -hmm. So we'll just, oh, good. You can do it. All, All right. right. Second. Right All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Motion carries. Uh, authorizing an RFP for cleaning services. So moved. <laughs> I'm really doing due diligence here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just send it out, right? Yeah. Just gonna send it. Send it out. Yeah. 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 Y
It's to do with possibly being able to provide infrastructure down the Bainville Road. Are you familiar with this one that Angie Barrington and whether who's, who's her boss? Anyways, it was brought to my attention, and you know, it's another is it an ARPA grant, ARPA money thing, or what, what's what is it about? Because it seems like it's right up our alley. It's to improve sewer and water capacity for areas that could be future development. I think it's I, I think. It, so are you familiar with this? Right. Have you seen the this? Infrastructure. Some of the, I, there's, everybody says IIJA, but just saying that like, that's the code for a whole big bill. Yeah. And so yeah. it is one of the pots of money in that. Yeah, it's a pot of money that's there. Piece. Yeah. Anyways. But they haven't come out with the... No, like, apparently they have, because right I got... I don't know, Angie sent me a, a, a sheet of paper and said this is what goes on. And last I knew, I think last month, they broke the rules, and, and so... My point being is that what this boils down to is, is, you know, we don't have a lot of developable real estate that apparently is available or left here because there's certain places and parcels that are tied up. And, you know, through zoning processes and all the other things that we've done, you know, we dedicated time and energy to the Beanville quadrant and the 12A South quadrant, and there's still developable land down there but it's lacking water and sewer. And those plans are sitting here. I mean, I think they've been in play now for 12 years that it's actually, I believe they're shovel ready. And so <clears throat> I'm not sure why we are not pursuing this because that's where if we're gonna grow the grand list and we're gonna help the budget situation, it seems like that's the most logical place to create some development opportunities here. And I'll fully disclose that I own property down there. Trini owns property down there. That irrelevant of that, that, we all, I mean, that's an area that I think we're <laughs> down to what we've got left to develop in the community. So planning and zoning had done their homework and created the zoning for this, and now it just lacks water and sewer. So I had looked into this before. through numerous operations before I owned any property down there, trying to create a tip district down there specifically for that. But I think in order to attract new businesses here, you know, you've got to have place for them to go and I'm not quite sure that that uh, we have I, I know we don't because you know we lost Nantucket Post Cap to Bethel because they found a more suitable space and so if we can't get water and sewer down there for years Lang has said he would expand the central supplies and tomorrow. he would, build he would tomorrow. do that tomorrow and I just think we're missing the opportunity so that's one of my last recommendations to you folks well, I think you about, should figure yeah. out how to move on this or find a way, whether or not, I don't know, maybe we don't qualify it, but I think it's, it's as important as fixing the water system is to figure out how to develop new, new space for businesses to move into. And then there's the whole permitting challenge, which well, I'm wondering if getting started about. If we get more water users and sewer users on the system, we don't have to extend capacity. But and it, it just brings, if we can get from that, most of that paid for by grant money, and we can potentially lower costs you, or not increase lower, costs. But you might be able to keep them flat for a increase, while. Maybe will not increase them. Not for a and while. you can grow the grand list this way. And I think when you yeah, look at the cost of new construction, new buildings these days, I mean, you know, I, I think it's a no-brainer. I think you have the potential down there to create 10 to $15 million worth of activity. So that's just my guess. But there's Lang's whole parcel before Central Supplies. There's currently what I own. You know, Trini's got some space. There's space across the road. <laughs> Trini it's all, doesn't have space. Well, somebody has player. space down there. Our son does. Your son has space <laughs> down there. Okay, your son's got space. Trini's but family. Whatever. Family, okay, has connections. It's the yeah. dynasty. It's, you know, it's just, it's just <laughs> long, you know, you got Vermont Castings down there that has for years said, hey, we'd love to have the sewer and water connection here. And so I know that's a living factor when you look at development because you can't build a building over a certain size without water, you know, without fire protection. And I just think we're missing an opportunity. So, so we do Wix and King did a like a basic plan, right? And there was an estimate. We took it out and dusted it off and updated it four years ago. Four or five years ago. It probably needs that again. Um, and we probably got to look at what. The, I'm sure there's some new permits and hoops we got to jump through yeah. for that. Um, unless we can 
is somehow figure out how to make it a railroad project because the railroad's right there and they don't have to get any state permit. Maybe we can pull them in. I know them. Maybe, well, maybe, we could maybe you can get a sewer wire line connected from the old, you know, from Pat Malone's property underneath the railroad tracks to connect yeah, like to this. I was going to say, maybe we move it off from the road over yeah. on the other side of that field and we go right in the railroad right away. And but, it's um, a limiting factor, and I think it's costing the town a lot of money not to do it. And I think at the time, four or five years ago, when we dusted this off, it was $1.1 million to bring that sewer and water connection down through the end of the road. So, uh, so there's the program that you're talking about. There's a few others also that are focused on water and wastewater. So it, you know, it may be another past work. Type thing, yeah. If they all have, if any of them have caps and you can't get to it, but I yeah, there was some caps. There's searching it, size, I number, but I'll, I can dust off, I can go grab that letter. I can, I'll see, I'll photocopy it and send you guys all a little link to it. So this is got so you know which program it is, but it's got a lot of could be beneficial. Trevor, is this, is this, is this figuring out this kind of stuff something that we could get help from? PNBC or from Two Rivers, is that, are they possible? possible? Two rivers. Is there any resources there that would, uh, I'm just thinking about how it's so hard for us to pursue these things right now with our staff sh shortage here in the house. I think it ends up on us for the scoping. They might be able to help with some of the process identification, opportunity identification, maybe even if there's different access to different funding mechanisms. But I think in terms of updating the scope, fully understanding what that requires, it's probably on us first. But this is one of those ones where it's a little bit of a lighter lift than some other grants have been in that at this point. It's finding the old study, bringing up the phone and saying, update this story if I want it to go. Yeah. At this date, looking out, what's the cost? What's the process we have to know? I know in the past when we looked at this and doing it, doing it as a C, CBDG grant thing, it was like, okay, that was tied to number of employees and all kinds of situations like that. This didn't seem to me like it was, it probably has those components to it, but it just seemed like it might be a quicker, faster patch to be able to at least possibly use some of that, some of this and some of this, similar to what we're doing with the water project. So, and I think with some of the, I mean, I think some of the other goals of the infrastructure grants is to make them accessible and finite. And so if that's truly the case, that's an easier thing for us to manage than the ones that pass the grant that goes on forever and pops up and requires us to, to go hunting for stuff that our partners may or may not have provided kind of thing. Yeah. But there is still that want to figure out put those resources mm -hmm. at the writing the mm -hmm. the verb dollar and that kind of stuff. Some of this should maybe fall on the mark, right? Go track down what the business, mm -hmm. you know, talk to the businesses, yeah, yeah, and it true. might give them a chance to get through the door and talk to Lang and talk to. Yeah. Well, that's what I think needs to happen. Is you need to. You what know, do you want to do? What does that look like? Where do you go? Kind of as his role as economic development director, that's what he should be chasing. Yeah. It might be that we handle the engineering and try to figure out how to map, shift the grant pieces on, and make sure everybody's kind of worked out. And I think to your point, Larry, because you know it's not just about tax revenue, it's about water sewer revenue and, and just generally improving the situation. So, you know, I'm more, I just think it's where we need to go here because we just don't have an opportunity to, to grow anything. And I think, you know, the way this it's, already, it's already developed here. Yeah. Well, the reason, I mean, the reason that from a planning commission standpoint, <clears throat> we created zoning <clears throat> down there. So literally you can build 50,000 square foot buildings on, you know, small lots. And you know, 50,000 square foot building, whether it's manufacturing or warehousing, it's going to generate some tax revenue. It's going to create some jobs. You know, we're still in the lumber of not having housing, but you know, we've been working on changing an ordinances to, you know, help work out the housing situation. So I think this is just another piece of the puzzle. And you know, back from when we changed the zoning, there just was not a lot of opportunity to create new spaces. And like I said, that's why we've lost some more businesses here that have gone south on us. Because they just can't get can't get what they wanted. I mean, Michael Hale bought that property down there with the intentions of moving the Nantucket Post and Cap to Beanville, but decided that the cost of you know taking on the infrastructure 
was too much for himself. So then all of a sudden, poof, you know, this magic bullet happened in, in Bethel. So he moves the company to Bethel. So, you know, it's not a lot of jobs, but it's probably a dozen, but now he's expanding down there. So, you know, we just, it's a missed opportunity. And if you continue to miss these opportunities, <laughs> the alligators, it's like this, and we're in trouble. So. Good morning, some grant stuff. I've been hesitant at different points. Um, but some of the technical stuff, especially on the grant management end, I think, uh, as Kayla has grown in familiarity, strength, we're better able to, we're closing out some of the obligations we're already <laughs> committed to and behind on. Mark's doing a good job, I think, rounding up some of the stuff that comes to community development programs. So between the two of them, I think we're about to enter a better space. Oh, Whereas four or five months ago, that wasn't possible. Yeah. I don't Broken out in hives all over at the word grant. <laughs> I'm sure. Now you just can't see it. I'm no. still breaking out. It's just, no, yeah, it's just I, more news. It's, it's overwhelming yeah. if you're, if it's, that's like a full time career. Yeah. Because they were, they, you know, back August, September, it was just, forget it. But I believe if you pull this out and dust it off, you know, this was a shovel ready kind of project. It was close. Um, yeah. I mean, it wasn't. We had like basically roughly where would it go and what what would it take, like how many lengths of pipe, that kind of thing. Yeah. What we didn't have is, is like, I don't think it was plans to the point of construction, though. I think it was, you know, it was we didn't have like where we were going to have the next. beyond thing, conceptual, but not be, quite fully like, engineered. So what do they call them? 60% plans or whatever it is. I think, I think that's kind of where it was. 60 at. scenario. Mm -hmm. Um, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Manager's report. Uh, I don't know if anybody's in the mood now that you've done the dedication. You, there's been a select board report in the past years. We did sort of a generic town one last year. I don't know if anybody wants to write on behalf of select board. <laughs> if not, we can do sort of the generic uh, one again. Not a <laughs> I, I don't think we can take on both. I've got, seriously, I've got a lot on my plate yeah. this weekend. Mm -hmm. So on this short notice, it's not something we do every year, or is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not last year. I don't think it's necessary. Not last year? <laughs> oh, well, then why break the trend? <laughs> I remember writing it two years. <laughs> I didn't mean, there yeah. wasn't one in the town report. Well, here's why, you know, the Herald does an overview. All it does is it's like a summary of yeah that's what it is and everybody else is summarizing the same stuff for us that's yeah. what i did two years ago as i went through the minutes and i think we picked out that, our, our that's good i'd rather write about the report what we did nobody's gonna miss it <laughs> i know but it's probably change go to the video <laughs> that's right. here's right see the tape all right here's, here's here's the link to the last 12 meetings <laughs> so then okay yeah and then we just had mentioned it in the report, the fire station, the additional insurance funds, we have them, they're deposited, they're safe. What happens to those funds? Uh, we go visit Jerry and sort of warm a climate he's in. Right? Hey. I think it's something we'll have to talk about what to do. I think we got to talk about some more of that too. Yeah. In the second session, because that's not the end of it. This right. is just a few invoices that they needed additional documents to pay us to reimburse us. So it's like 198,000 something, but there's a much bigger one that we need to talk about. So if you got time on uh, February, what, third? Go sit in mini. If we had any further, <laughs> I don't want to preempt any else the ocean later. Oh, that was. Have we had any further communications from our sheriff to be? We're going to have that in the executive session. Okay. I assume that might be the case. Yeah. Is that the end of the manager's report? I'm good. All right. Um, so do we have to find that we need to go into executive session? Do so. we have that one? A couple of the topics, yeah, they should go through there. There's a motion to find it's prudent, necessary, to ensure general public knowledge. Will it's be on you, Tom. Come on. Scurrilous and disadvantageous. So moved. Yes. Yeah. Very good, Tom. All, All right. in favor? Aye. 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 I uh, want to enter contracts, labor relations agreements, collective bargaining, evaluation of public official personnel. Cost pending cost of litigation. Okay. And I will um, so I will move that we go into the Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I got this thing down.